gang. Welcome back to another video here at Joe Daddy's Garage. This week's video, I'm going to attempt to replace the door hinge pins for the Brooklyn Pony. I mentioned earlier that these hinges were one of the few things that I could save from the car, and I've used them, and they're in good shape. You know, the main structure is great, but there is some wear on the pin assembly itself. Now, you can go out and buy aftermarket hinges, but I can tell you from experience that they can have problems. I've had to modify those hinges just to make them fit the door and the opening at the same time. And so if I can, I want to salvage these original hinges. So to do that, I have these kits. And this is a hinge pin, hinge, pin and bushing kit, uh, part number HW468. And I think I got these from CJ Pony Parts. Everybody sells them and they're pretty basic as far as it goes. It has the pin and two bushings in the kit. So I'm going to work on getting the hinges off of the Brooklyn Pony and replacing those pins. So as you can see, it does have some rust on this assembly. That's not a problem. These things are very thick and very solid. However, that's the problem. So anytime you're trying to put on a door, you've got to deal with that as an alignment because it'll change. Now, for me doing this project, I'm able to work with what was here, but at this point, I want to make it better. So I'm going to take these off and work on replacing these pins. I also want to work on the lower hinge. It has some play in it. It's not as bad, but it still needs to be fixed. Now, they do sell another kit that you can replace this arm and this pin. Much better. All right, with the hinge all cleaned up, you can actually hear the sound and maybe see the play that's in there. Now there are two bushings on this inner piece and they're driven in from each side. The bushings are there to wear out. So that's why they make these replacement pins. Probably, I know years ago when I was working on my Model A, these didn't have bushings. You know, this was just a straight through hole and they relied on that. But at least they're proactive enough to say, hey, these things will wear out, so let's add some bushings in there. Now what needs to be done or needs to happen is this pin has to be driven out. Now there's a variety of ways to do this. They make a tool that you can put on one side, it's like a big C-clamp, and it'll compress and push that pin in Another way is you can take something as simple as a socket. And now this is a, let me see here, in this case an SK, I believe it's a 13 millimeter. Yeah, 13. So it'll fit around the head of the pin. And you want to make sure, like this one has, it only goes so deep with that, the uh, design of the opening for the bolt. You know, the like if you're putting on a bolt, so the pin can only go in so deep into the socket. What I want to do is stand this up on a metal plate. I have a steel table that I'm going to use and put the pin or uh, put the socket down and strike the pin with a punch. And then once it gets so far along, if need be, I'll go to a longer punch. And I may have to use something a little bit different depending on how well this goes. If this breaks loose, I can just continue to drive it out and maybe be able to mount it or set it on the vise and tap it out the rest of the way. Another thing you could do is add some uh, rust dissolver or lubricant to help the pin slide. But I'm going to try it just the way it is and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I have my socket, my punches, hammer, hearing protection. 
eye protection. I see a little bit of movement, just a little, but I'm going to guess this is rusted in, it rusted in pretty good based on the rest of the car. So I'm going to put some penetrant in there and let it soak for a little bit and we'll see what happens. I'm going to try some of this Trizol penetrating solvent. Obviously, rotating the hinge isn't going to make any difference because the pin is in a fixed location. So I want to make sure I get it down under the head and in this other end here. It's probably more that it's stuck in the head because normally there's a, um, a set of splines that get driven in and that's probably what's hanging on. So we're going to let this soak a while and try it again. All right, it's been about 20 minutes or so. I'm going to try again. bit of movement. Yep. Very little, but it is moving. Just want to make sure that my socket is still clearing that pin. It's close, but it's still clearing it. It would help if I had a second set of hands. Yep, it's moving. Just a little bit at a time, but I can get my thumbnail under it right now. There, I felt something there. A little bit more. Sorry. I'm going to get a slightly bigger socket. I feel a little bit of binding, so I'm going to try another socket. This is a 9 16 A little more play around the pin, but I think it's still going to be enough to catch the uh, hinge. There's some movement. That's good. Now what I can do is move this to the vise and that will give it a little more stability or, well, since I have this steel table I could probably get away with it on this table and just catch the edge. Now you don't want to drive the shoulder of your punch into that hole. So that's why I have this longer punch. Well there, that removed the middle section. Now I'm going to use the new pin anyway, but you can kind of look at this pin. I can feel some wear on it. So I'm going to drive that the rest of the way out. I want to point out some things too. If you wanted to at this point you could clean up some of the rough edges just for appearance purposes. I see you know metal here on the inside of this channel or groove. Just you know just an observation if you wanted to. Um, 
the next part of this is getting out these bushings. And I'm going to do it the same way that I did the pin in that I'm going to set it up on top of a socket and drive it out with a hammer. So again, you know the drill. Now this might be a little trickier because I really can't catch the edge and hold this in my hand the way I want. So I may have to switch up and put it in the vise because I'm going to have to strike this at an angle. And I can already feel that the punch isn't really agreeing with this. Let me just try it once, see if it works. Yeah. One more time. Yep. Let me reset. That's better. There it is. Great. Kind of hard to see, but there's definitely some wear on that bushing. So let me flip this over and I'll get the other one out. Using a long punch. There it is. Of course this is a little beat up from hammering on it, but definitely worn. Yep, let me see if I can get that pin. Now I may have knocked it out of shape a little bit, but pretty common. Now at this point you could take a wire brush you know kind of like a, uh, a brush you would use to clean the barrel of a gun and run that through there. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit make sure there's no debris in the way when the new bushing goes in and you could even put it back in the blaster but I would recommend you degrease this first if you're using a blaster because that oil that I use to separate everything is on this. Obviously it's contaminated so that could affect your um, blaster. So again clean that up. You could try a variety of things but I may put this back in the blaster and just blow out anything that's inside there just to make it quick but as it is it's pretty clean. I mean the only thing in there was those bushings and I may be able to just even take the brush and get it down in that bore. Yeah, that may work. Yeah, that's going to work fine. Again, options up to you. All right, next step is to get the new bushings in place. Now, I want to point out. These are a tolerance fit. If I had to drive them out with a punch, I have to drive them in. So it's not just going to press in with your finger, obviously. Now, again, this is like a bronze, you know, bronze material. So it's not designed to take abuse. You know, if you try to just drive this in, you'll end up bending it, or it could be out of alignment, and you're going to end up destroying the bushing and starting over. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to show you something that I think will work. I'm going to take the new pin and put the new bushing on one end, insert it into this hinge half, and then put the other bushing on top. And the idea is I'll use the pin to basically keep this centered and square. Now I'm not going to be beating this together with the pin because it has that shoulder there that goes into the upper half so when it's driven in it won't rotate. 
but this gives me a foundation, let's say. So if I took a socket and a hammer, and all I want to do, I'm, again, I'm not trying to force this in. I just want to get it started. So if that's going to align it, I'm just going to tap on it a little bit. Well, look at that. It's actually working better than I thought. It's going in. See that? I was just wanting to get it started. And then what I was going to do is set it up on the uh, vise and tap it in with the socket. Just, just to finish it off. But that went in really good. So I'm happy with that. All right. So now I'm going to reverse that. I'm going to put the bushing on the other end and I'll put the uh, pin back through that first bushing and I'll repeat the process and basically it should just go back in the same way nice and aligned pull that back out and finish it off and you can hear the pitch change whenever you're hitting something that's moving it kinda has a dull thud but when you hit and it's bottomed out and it sounds solid that's time to stop great I like it now I'm gonna deburr the other half of the hinge and make sure this thing's cleaned up nice not have any sharp edges which this feels really good so I'm gonna clean up that half and then we'll go back to assembly All right, all cleaned up and ready to go back together. Now, when you put this together, make sure, double check, triple check, that you put it on the right way because you don't want to have to take this apart and start over. So, when you look at the door jam, the A pillar, you've got the three holes. You know, this slope portion goes to the front of the car. If you were to put this on the wrong way, the arrow, let's say the pointy end, is going to be facing out. So when you try to close that, it's not going to work. It'll get caught up and bind. So picture it as the arrow pointing in towards the inboard part of the car. So it may take a little bit of effort to get that to line up, but you can kind of see it when it's assembled, you know, the function of it. And really another way, you know, don't only do one hinge at a time, and then you can compare it to the other one on the opposite side. Now. I'm going to insert this pin, and you'll notice the pin is a lot longer than the original one. They do this for a variety of reasons. There's different designs, and so these pins are just kind of a universal, so they're going to be long. And when you're done, you're going to cut that pin off, take a you know cut-off wheel. Now, you could set this up, drive on it with a hammer. That's one way to do it. Um, I'm going to show you another way, and I'm going to take another this socket here. This happens to be an 11 millimeter SK, and it fits nicely over the pin. It has a smaller diameter in the center. You can see that it fits nicely. So I'm going to put this in the vise and line it up, and use the vise to compress. So it gives me a way to control it without beating on it. Take some effort. And that's it. There's going to be a little tiny bit of play, but there has to be some play. You know, it's not like a bearing surface, you know, on a crankshaft. So you're going to have a little bit of play, but that's fine. I mean, it just moves just a tiny, 
tiny bit. And now what I'll do is take a cutoff wheel and cut off that remainder and this hinge will be done. Now I have another tool that I can use to cut this excess off with and that is the bad boy diamond disc that I've shown before in my the uh, tool demonstration I did. So I'm going to use that to trim that off. Now basically, I'm going to do the same thing for the lower hinge, so I will soak it with that penetrant and get this pin out, replace the bushings, and reassemble it. However, it's likely that I'm going to have to work on getting this pin out of here. This bushing here is more like a roller, and it's designed to move as this plate moves back and forth across it. It's not really meant to be metal to metal. I mean it is metal to metal but this is meant to roll around and there's actually a wear groove. I can maybe you can see that right there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do this kit. I really didn't want to because this is very difficult to get out and I may end up having to go to some extreme measures <laughs> to get this apart but it's part of the process. Um, this arm is probably usable, so I'll have to consider whether I want to take this pin out or not. However, this one does have a drive out uh, way, and you can drive it out with a punch. But this other one, nope, it's solid. So it's pressed in, and it's going to take some work to get that out of there. I already know that. So I'll still change out this pin since I'm already this far. I don't know that the other kit comes with this pin anyway. If it does, I just, I'll just end up with a spare. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'll take that apart. Parts showed up. Let's see what they sent me. I know what I ordered. That's what I'm looking for. Now, I did order some other other stuff. Uh, I believe this was a, yeah, that's a trunk seal. So I'm going to try that out later. These are some seals for the um, window openings where the, you know, glass goes up and down in the quarter window. So some of those. And this, pretty important, on the Dynacorn floor pan that I have in the Brooklyn Pony the one piece assembly. It doesn't have the bracket for mounting your rear brake uh, hose that goes to you know your hard lines that run across the differential housing. So I have to add this. So they have it. Part number looks like HW1246 I believe. That's what it says there anyway. So now I have that. I can put that in place. Now, these are the kits that I was talking about that had all the extra pieces and parts and everything that we should need to do this job. This kit is HW899 by the looks of it. And uh, we'll open that up. So as I talked about earlier, you know, the spring that was in here was pretty soft. And of course, the bushing was showing wear on the inside or on the back side here but obviously this hasn't turned in years so that's all gonna have to come apart so in the kit it does come with a replacement arm 
very similar in shape to the one that's on here. A little bit different, but the function is going to be the same. So it has the arm, has a new spring that has a lot more tension. It's also longer. Interesting. Maybe this one has just compressed over time, and this is what they're supposed to look like. Now this has two pins, and I already have a kit for the single pin, so this will take place of at least the hinge pin uh, center point, and then probably, uh, we'll see, it's got two serrated uh, shoulders on these pins, maybe they just sent me two, I don't know. There it is, the new bushing. So that bushing will take place of that. And I'm going to say that this one with the longer shoulder is going to take the place of that pin. So those will go together. This pin with a short shoulder is going to take the place of this pin. But this kit, now that I look at it, is probably an upper and a lower kit. You probably can't order it with just a lower. At least that's what I'm assuming. So this this pin and bushing setup would go to the upper hinge. So we can set that aside. Okay, so we have all the components. I just need to get this apart. Alright, as I've said before, I put on some penetrating fluid, you know, something to help it. And you can try different things, WD-40, whatever you have. And of course I'm going to put on my hearing protection as usual. Safety glasses. And some gloves. Now as you can see, I hope you can see, I've got some blocks of wood supporting this. And I'm doing that because it's kind of hard to hold everything while you're wailing away on a punch. So I'm hoping that this will help in the process. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove that little catch arm. So I'm going to drive on that and see if it'll come apart. Nice. Now, you can also see I'm using a socket just to uh, give it somewhere to go. And I might be able to get one more, one more hit on that. There we go. Now that wasn't too bad. So the arm's out of the way, along with the pin. Now, I want to move on to get the main pin out of the uh, hinge. And this is a little more, you know, rusty, let's say. But I'm still going to have to do the same effect. So I'm going to try to set something up to where I can have it sitting on top of another socket. I think I'm going to try it with just the one block of wood. I've got this socket underneath the pin and this pin, this socket happens to be a 15 millimeter uh, SK. So I'm going to set that on there. See if I can't drive this out. This might be a little bit tricky. but. probably not going to want to move.
I have to switch up to a slightly bigger socket to get the clearance. What do you see this pin? All right, that's going to bottom out. See if I can't drive this out on the edge of the table that I have. There it goes. Whew. That's rough. <laughs> Let me show you that pin. That's pretty amazing. You can see how much it's rusted away from being inside that cavity. So, good thing I'm changing these. Make it all solid again. <laughs> the rest of this will be fine. Let me see if I can compare. Oh yeah, that fits nice. Nice and snug. Great. Now of course I'll have to drive out these bushings the same way I did the bushings on the upper hinge. I'll just take a punch and get in there at an angle and drive those out and then we're gonna tackle this guy. This should be interesting. Alright, got the bushings out. They were worn through so just kinda of had to keep picking at it with the punch until I got it out. This one kinda of fell apart as I was taking it out but that's fine. And just like the top I took the wire brush, cleaned this up, but the thing I'm probably gonna do differently on these is I'll probably run these through my media blaster before putting them back together just might be a little easier to do that now this is gonna be the tough one and I say that because you don't have a way to drive it out from the opposite side so I'm gonna put this in the vise and I think what I'll try is I kinda of have a sort of a homemade slide hammer and I think if I can get onto it right, that I can pull it out with a slide hammer. Now, if I can't, there's other options. I could drill this thing. Um, I'm gonna, I may put some heat on it with a little butane torch, you know, uh, the, pro, the little map gas or whatever, and heat that up a little bit so that it expands. Just, in, but I'm, I'm initially I'm going to try to put my homemade slide hammer on here. This is my homemade slide hammer. <laughs> it's a pair of vice grips on a metal rod and then a slide handle and a nut on the end here that holds everything together. I've used this on a variety of things and it does a job. So I'm going to try this. Basically I'm going to clamp that onto that pin and whack it and see what happens. see a little bit of a gap wondering if I can't uh, maybe cut off that collar and give these vice grips something to grab onto time to break out the zizz wheel again Okay, so I got the collar split off, and uh, you know we just had to keep grinding at it till I got into smaller pieces that I could break off. So I've decided I'm going to 
go ahead and add some heat to it. Um, and I've got this little, I guess, map gas. I don't even know what it is. I assume it's map gas. I'm just going to put some heat on the hinge. Hopefully that's going to help. So I'm not going to waste the time sitting here showing you me showing uh, me applying the heat. So I'm going to pause or stop the video for a little bit. It's definitely getting hot. Now I don't expect it to get like cherry red, you know, like with a torch. But it's definitely getting hot. You can see it's burning off, or maybe you see some of the smoke coming from the residual penetrant. So the heat is getting all the way over to the back side or you know this this part of the hinge. So again I'll put the slide hammer on and try to get this out of there. Success. Smoking. <laughs> All right. Gonna let that cool down and then we'll get back to work on it. All right. So everything's blasted, cleaned up, looking good. Both pieces. And what I want to start with is putting in the bushings that go in the centerpiece. So as I showed earlier, I'm going to line up the bushings with this uh, this pin. Now this pin in this kit is whoops. This pin in this kit is shorter than the other pin that I used. So I might have to experiment a little bit, but I think I can pull it off. Yep, I'm going to do the same thing that I did earlier. And it would be nice if I could use that long pin because then I wouldn't have to fight with holding everything together. You know, the first one I did, that long pin slipped right over, or the socket slipped right over that long pin. So I'm just going to hold it in place, try to tap that in a little bit. Yep, it's going. So now that should be aligned. See there? The pin turns freely. So I can reverse that pin and do the same thing with the other bushing. Again, that longer pin that I had in the first kit was easier to use. Okay. So they're both started. The alignment's good. So what I'll do in this case, I think I'll just use the vise and press these in together. I think that worked. Check it with the pin. Yep, nice and straight. Fits nice. Okay. Now that I have the bushings in place, I want to install this pin with the roller on it. So this one has a longer shoulder, as I mentioned earlier. I'm going to just insert that on top. And I'm just going to use the top of the vise and hopefully this goes in smoothly. I'm going to just try to get it started with the hammer. A little crooked. That looks better. And now that I have it started, I'm going to use the vise to press it in.
Ooh. It's not wanting to go in very easily. It's straight. Whew. That's a tough one. Wow. I may have to get a cheater on this vise. I didn't expect it to be this difficult, but that's the way it is sometimes. It's going. I think this may not be the way I want it. <laughs> Apparently that pressure has made the pin swell and so the little roller isn't. <laughs> but that's why I do these. That's why I do this type of video so that you can see as well what's going on. And I think in looking at these, the comparison of these other pins I think here's what's going on. If you look, the original pin has some uh, pretty tight grooves, you know, let's say, where the replacement pin, it's a bit, the grooves are a bit thicker. And I'm not sure if the diameter, I would assume they made the diameter the same. Um, however, this may be why it, it's having a you know, difficult time getting in there. So I'm actually going to take this back apart. I'll probably use a slide hammer just like I did before. I'm going to take this pin back out. I'll use the pin from the other kit um, and see or see what I can do. But this is not going to work. I want that ball, that roller to turn, and unfortunately, this one is no good. Well, it took a little effort, but I got that pin back out. Now, of course, I had to grind and separate that collar like I did when I took out the original one. And here's what really happened. When I compressed this pin, it changed shape. It got fatter here on the shoulder. The reason for that is the dimensions are different between this pin and the original. And let me show you what I mean. Now, I'm not, gonna me I'm not necessarily going to measure this pin just yet. I want to show you this is the other pin from the package and if I measure that and again I can only get you know so accurate but this is about 336 I don't know if you can read that or not but 336 okay the pin that I pulled out was well there's 326 so the new pin is ten thousandths bigger than the original. Same way if I compare the new short pin that's going to hold the swing arm, it's about 334, 335, 336, somewhere in that range. And the original one that I pulled out, 325, 326, something like that. Okay. The reason this is an issue is the hole that is in the lower part of the hinge, and this is going to vary because it's got edges cut into it. I've got, well, there's 318, 
you know, I can move it around a little bit and probably get 320, maybe 321. And the reason I bring this up, these pins, yes, they're going to fit tight. We know that. But, you know, these original pins may have been a harder steel, it had more temper to them. You can see on this pin, when it was compressing, it was actually taking off material right there. I mean, you can see that or not, my finger can catch on that. So it was, it was reforming this pin to make it fit. So what I think I'm going to do uh, is take this new pin and I'm, I think I'm going to sand it down just a little bit. I want to, I want to reduce the material just a little. Again, you, you know, the, the tolerance here is pretty tight, let's say. You know, even if I tried to reinsert or start this one in, it's not even close. This one actually starts to slide in. I mean, I can push it in probably a quarter of an inch just with my hand. You know, if I catch the serrations on the right, you know, right alignment. And also, these are different the way they're cut. This one seems to be finer than the replacement. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sand this down a little bit, try to reduce this diameter, and then see if I can't get this one to go in better. That already feels better. As you can see I can start to press that in just with my hand. I feel better about that. And I, didn't, I don't think I took that much off. Just, just knock the edges down a little bit, reduce some of the overall material, and I think that's going to work. Alright, so here's the pin, here's the new collar. And I think what I'm also going to do is just put just a little bit of WD-40 on here. If it'll help it go in, great. So I'll get that lined up. And I'm just going to use the brass end of this dead blow to see how that goes. That's a lot better. Now, I'm going to try to finish it with the vise. Success! <laughs> I got it in to where the collar is now, you know, the, the shoulder part of the pin is bottomed out into the hinge assembly. So now you know. Now you know. And again, that's why I do this stuff. I want you to see what could be a possibility and be a conflict. So I think what I'm also going to do is this other one uh, that gets the pin if I do a size comparison with that like if I, I start to push that in I mean I can't even get it started so we already know the dimensions of that pin but we'll double check it talk about it again you know 335 and this one where the little um, arm is supposed to go look at that 322 that's a lot of material to push so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna grind down 
the uh, edges on this pin, those grooves, and get it to where it'll fit into this upper portion. Now you know. All right. So I've tapered down that pin a little bit, like I said, and it'll, of course, go into the little arm. And now I can at least get it somewhat started into the, uh, the hole that it's supposed to go into. So, you know, if you look at this, you're going to compare, you know, when you're assembling it, you can, you know, do one side at a time so you can do a comparison. But also, the nub on this arm is going to align with the base where the spring goes. So just keep that in mind, you know, if you get confused. Um, I think what I'm going to try to do on this one is, is the same kind of idea. I, I can see it already got it started, but I'm going to put a little bit of WD-40 on it. And then get it started in the hole. A little bit, a little bit out of alignment. So let me adjust that. And hopefully, I can pull this off and do the device without destroying things. And it's kind of tricky. You can't quite center it up in the or square it up in the vise. Uh, I don't like that. Hmm. I just want to push it sideways because I can't get deep into the vise. The shoulder uh, here doesn't allow it to get in there quite the way I want it. Let's see if I can just tap it down with a hammer. pretty close. Just a little bit further and it'll be on. You can just see maybe the little bit of spline sticking out. Perfect. Bottomed out just like it should be and that'll take care of the swing arm now, of course, the next part is assembling the rest of the hinge. Now, I've already done some measurements, and I want to show you this because I think it's important. The hole for the pin, if I measure that, you know, in this case, it's 3, eh, 46, 47, there I get up to 348. Something like that. Sorry, I'm trying to look at look at the scale <laughs> without looking at the camera. Anyway, so 347, 348. Now this is the pin that came with the um, kit from CJ Pony, and if I measure this, that's 352. That's a good. I think that's a good ratio. It's uh, not as extreme as the other pins. So. Make sure you line these up right because once you go to assemble this, if you have this swing arm facing that way, you're not going to get it around to get it inside of that pin. So just kind of do a visual and get it lined up. And now I've got to get that pin all the way down. So let me get the hole lined up there we go and I'm gonna just try to tap on it a little bit with the brass hammer just to see what happens and that's actually working but I'm gonna move up to 
a bigger punch and try to drive that in with the uh, steel hammer. Actually, change that. I'm going to use a chunk of brass. Let it take the abuse so that I don't damage the pin. So, I don't know where I got this, but just a big chunk of brass. Anyway, let me put my hearing protection on. Almost there. That'll work. Now, I'm not going to put the, the spring in just yet. I want to clean this up and get some paint on it, and then I'll put the spring in. But everything works now. As you can see, I've painted up the hinge so there's no more bare metal. And now what I want to do is install the spring. As I mentioned earlier, you know, the springs, if you can see them both together, you know, the, um, the original one is quite a bit shorter. And I don't know if they're, the spring count, the quill count is probably the same, but this is just worn out. So what I want to do is I'm going to set the uh, little swing arm here. If you consider it like fully open, this is going to be tighter. This distance between the the uh, bracket or the swing arm and the nub on the hinge portion. So as you move that through its cycle, you can see that it's going to get a little bit bigger in a position where the door is closed. So you can see it's almost a 90 degree angle right here. What I want to use is I'm going to try to use is this tool. Now this is a spring compressor. Pretty simple. But the part number, and this is from Advanced Auto Parts, is W84603. See up there in the corner. Now the idea is you put this in to the, the uh, jaws here where there's some cutouts and you try to position it so that I don't want to get it too deep. I'm going to try to keep it a little more out towards the front. So I may have to open this up a little bit and just play around with the alignment. So I'm going to try it basically like that and compress this down and see what happens. So it's a little tricky to get it to stay in there, but I'm going to keep a finger on it. And the nut is a 13 millimeter, so I'm just going to clamp that down. Hope it doesn't explode in my face. See if I can get that in. So that's in place. Now I'll loosen that nut, and hopefully everything just kind of lines up. Now that has a bit of a curve to it. I don't know how well you can see that, but um, it's kind of hard to, but there's a, it's curved. But I don't think it's going to go anywhere. You know, it's got the post over here on the main hinge assembly and then the little tang on the arm, which is, here's the original one. So it has that little tang that it sits against. So that should do it. Now, at this point, I can't do anything else with this, you know, until I mount it back on a car and, you know, start working with it. So I'm gonna, I don't even want to try to pull this open at this point. Uh, it might go, well, maybe I could try it. Yeah, I'll probably do it when it's on the car and let the spring hold tension on it. 
and I might just <laughs> throw a rag over this when I'm trying to open the door so in case it does want to let go it doesn't come flying at me. Now one other thing I did do was I blasted and painted all the bolts so they're all ready to go so when it goes together you know just part of the process but these are the original style bolts or actually these are the original bolts they've got a little serrated edge on the washer and uh, those are going to put it back together all right that'll be the end of this particular video it went a little bit longer than i expected it to but you know sometimes you run into complications and it's worth showing so that you have an idea of what to expect whenever you try to do the same thing. If I didn't show those problems, hey, you just think it's all magic, just like the TV shows where everything happens in 30 minutes and it's all great. However, that's, that's life. <laughs> so, in review, I did the upper hinge, works great. I did the lower hinge, have not mounted it. I'm not going to play with that yet. And I also reconditioned the bolts that hold the hinges together. Now, I'll try to take a picture or show you know what I use, but again, I use that spring compression tool. Um, I use a hinge pin kit. This, I, I think, was from Mustangs Unlimited, and that part number was HW468. And I also used the kit HW899 from CJ Pony Parts. So, the point being, if you're just doing one hinge, like the upper hinge, you can get away with just this kit, which is a single pin and a pair of bushings. If you're going to do the full set, go ahead and get the big kit from CJ, uh, CJ Pony Parts. Two pins, four bushings, spring, arm, all that stuff. So, anyway, hope that was helpful. I know you've been waiting for more videos on the Brooklyn Pony, and there's going to be more coming. As I mentioned, I'm trying to do a video every week now, so I'm trying to generate you know, some more viewing and followers and subscribers and all that cool stuff. So with that in mind, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, and we'll go from there. It's been great. The channel's been growing. Numbers are going up, and I, I, I appreciate every one of you who've been along for the ride. Now... One more point of interest, I believe the next video that I'm going to do is going to be on mounting or test fitting the I Did It steering column for the Brooklyn Pony. I have the column and the pieces that you know go with the assembly from I Did It. I'm waiting on a, um, a gasket that goes around the column. I don't want to put it all together without that gasket. It's on back order from CJ. Hopefully it's here this week or sometime next week. If not, I will still work on getting that column mounted. As you know, this car has rack, rack and pinion steering, so you know it has various things you have to do to make that column fit properly. And so we'll go with that when we get to that point. Oh, one more thing. I will have another viewers project video coming out. I believe it is Christian and he's from Romania. So that's going to be an interesting video. He's already submitted the video to me. I just have to put it all together and get that out. That'll be coming out on Sunday. And I may have an interim video coming out with uh, some maintenance. So just, just be aware of that. And that's it. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And until next time, take care of yourselves. If I can salvage these original hinges. The trick is, these bushings are a, a resistance fit or a, um, now another way to cut off this wheel, or cut off this post, bleh, Um, nope.